Verbascum thapsis. The nickname for this plant is candlestick. This is part one and in part two I'll be sharing a mnemonic or memory technique to help you commit to memory the most distinguishing characteristics of this plant for identifying purposes. Be sure to watch all of part one so that part two is understandable. This is a weedy plant, grows to about uh, three to seven feet tall at maturity. At the base, it's between two to four feet across. As you see, it resembles a candlestick. That is where the nickname is derived from. This image is included to demonstrate or to illustrate how the plant can grow up to seven feet tall. This picture shows us how the leaves are what's referred to in botany as undulate, which means that they're somewhat wavy on the surface. Undulate, U-N-D-U-L-A-T-E, could also mean wavy edges, which these leaves can be as well. The stem leaves, as you see, which by the way the stems develop during the second year, they get smaller as they ascend the stem. The plant is stout, it stands erect, it's usually unbranching. If there are any branches on this plant, they will occur just below the flower spike, which we will uh, see in more detail later on. This is the flower spike. Not all of the flowers bloom at the same time. They bloom during different times. You see that the petals are pale yellow. Here is a picture of a couple of uh, or more than two um, candlesticks or mullein or for bascom thapsis. Here's one, here's another one, one there, one there, one there. Uh, this image is included to show you what the first year plant looks like. Resembles somewhat of a fire, doesn't it? It's not an orange or, or a yellow flower or yellow fire but um, it's a green fire nonetheless. Could remind you of a can candle, fire, flame. This by the way is also a, a referred to as a rosette. Rosette or round formation of leaves close to the ground. Undulate leaves, wavy. Notice also how not all the flowers are blooming at the same time. Random blooming times here on the candlestick. Now these flower spikes can be up to three feet long one to three feet long. 
hundreds of flowers which bear thousands hundreds of thousands of seeds which we'll see later more plants in the first year The leaves are very densely hairy. They're woolly like or feel like felt. The margins of each leaf or the edges of the leaves are slightly scalloped, which are um, rounded. They will not have uh, sharp teeth. This is what distinguishes it from one of its lookalikes, which is called foxglove. There are other distinguishing characteristics between this plant and its poisonous lookalikes. A couple we will get into later. There are up to seven, which is shared on the fact sheet of this plant, which can be read or found at survivalplantsmemorycourse.com and just search or sort by nickname, candlestick, or there on the main index page look for verbascum thapsis you'll find that information under uh, miscellaneous the shape is somewhat oblong or obovate which means it's egg shaped but tapers more at the base see how this tapers here at the base now this will refer to the rosette leaves the first year leaves which are obovate They are 6 to 18 inches long and up to 6 inches across. They're very absorbent. And as you see, they also resemble the shape of being um, lance shaped. Now, the lance is key to the mnemonic. or the memory technique which is shared in part two. This lance you will find in your shoe. The color of the leaves are grayish green. They can be white or appear to be white. or they could appear to be silvery like a silvery color the underside of each leaf you see have prominent leaves or prominent veins both sides the entire plant as a matter of fact the stem and the leaves uh, have dense hair it's downy again feels like felt very wool very thick woolly prominent veins undulate around the sides scalloped this side uh, doesn't show so too much of a scallop margin or edge now this is a cross section of one of the leaves or uh, the leaf stem you see it's hollow I included this image because it 
distinguishes it from one of its or the poisonous look-alike foxglove where the cross section of the foxglove leaf stem not plant stem but the mid rib of the leaf a foxglove will be u-shaped like a stalk of celery whereas this you see is more of a triangular crossed cut Again, rosette leaves up to 18 inches long, 6 to 18 inches long to be precise, and up to 6 inches across. Notice you could see some scalloping here. We do not see sharp serrated teeth. We do see a waviness. This leaf will be thick, hairy on both sides, not just on the underside like the foxglove is. The poisonous look-alike with deadly leaves. The leaves of the candlestick plant here are also decurrent. Again, the stem develops during the second year. The leaves on the stem are decurrent meaning that the leaf blade extends down the central stem below the point of the leaf attachment and it forms narrow wings down the central stem here about a quarter halfway up the leaf's blade about a quarter or up to halfway up the leaf's blade the midrib of the leaf is actually joined to the stem and the further up the plant you go the less decurrent the leaves become See the pubescence or hairs? It's wavy. Prominent veins. The petals are a pale yellow. The lobes are round. There are five petals. And five stamen. The flowers can also be white, but it's very, very rare that they are white. As long as they're not purple. 
purple is the foxglove, which also resembles a candlestick form, which causes confusion with some people. These flowers will be replaced by seed pods after pollination. Surrounding these petals or these flowers or encasing these flowers are five sepals which are green. This is an image of the seed pods, uh, seed stalks, which have by now replaced the flowers. These uh, seed pods or seed stalks up to three feet tall or feet three feet long the stalks themselves up to three feet long, the plant itself up to seven feet tall can persist through the winter. You'll find on the fact sheet of this plant one of its other uses is fish poisoning. These are the brown seed stalks you will shake the tiny seeds from out of. Now, uh, these seed pods, we'll see a closer picture of them uh, coming up, will split and there are hundreds and hundreds of seeds in each one of these um, seed pods. The seeds are grounded and then uh, process for poison fishing. Which is, by the way, illegal in most places, but I go through all that on the uh, fact sheet, survivalplantsmemorycourse.com. This leaf here resembles more of a, the lance, which is uh, key in the uh, mnemonic coming up. We do have more uh, pointed teeth here, but with a trained eye, and it is again not one of the main distinguishing characteristics. Uh, that distinguish this plant from its poison sickle likes. Again, as I said earlier, that there are seven differences between this leaf and the leaf of its poisonous lookalikes. Its poisonous lookalike, the foxglove. Now, the two main differences which uh, we should focus on are the midrib or stem of the candlestick plant is like you saw earlier is more triangular whereas the foxglove it'll be u-shaped like you're cutting cutting through a stalk of celery and the foxglove has pubescence or hairs on the bottom surface whereas in this plant it's hairy on both surfaces so those are the two main differences now the trained eye uh, can um, to uh, you utilize or or uh, compare the other five differences. Let's see here. Um, moving on, I would say that the stem leaves, which again we are discussing, uh, can be more egg shaped as well but they taper stem leaves are ovate egg shaped 
but tapering more toward the base or the leaf. Or oblong, obovate, egg-shaped, but tapering toward the top of the leaf. This is a picture of the foxglove, the poisons look alike. And as you see, this plant also resembles the candlestick form, which this plant is, uh, or our featured plant is, derives its nickname from. The flower of the poisonous plant is tube-shaped or, or a horn shaped they do not spread out like a hand the flowers here also have a stem whereas the plant we're studying have flowers which are stemless they don't have a stem the flowers attach directly to the base therefore the seed pods will also attach to the base. Here in this poisonous plant, you see that the seed pods, which follow the flowers, have a stem. Both plants um, never mind. Let's see, okay, we see that both plants have five stamen or uh, sepals, I should say. These are sepals here. Uh, the flower color is uh, purple. It's, they're not yellow. You want to stay away from this plant. This is a picture of the foxglove leaves. As you see, again, become more familiar with uh, comparing or contrasting these two plants, one will be able to notice in the field this serration, it's serrated, very sharp teeth, and more of a consistent pattern. Not wavy on the surface, not wavy around the edges, no hairs on this top surface, but it will be hairy on the bottom surface. Stay away from this plant. Poisonous. Very toxic. Deadly. This again is foxglove. Foxglove. Now, these are the seed pods for the candlestick that we're studying, mullen. Um, stemless. They have split open. They are woolly. They have uh, some hairs on, on them. They're egg-shaped and they have two cells. They're about 6 to 10 millimeters long. You see the seeds are rectangular. They're oblong. They're about four to eight millimeters long. They, along with the stem, are uh, developed during the second year, obviously. They have very fine ridges and tiny pits on the surface. These seed pods have stems on them, so I, I would stay away from this. I put this image here for some reason, and uh, honestly I forgot what it was, but um, if I was in the field I would just avoid this simply because, as we see, the seed pods have stems. And this is why... <clears throat> 
now that I think about it, this is why um, I included the flower stem versus flower stemless discussion. Because in the winter, when the seed pods are present and bearing many seeds, you're in a survival situation. You uh, have an opportunity to gather some fish or to harvest or to, you know, do some fishing. The leaves are not going to be present. So how are you going to identify this plant and distinguish it from its poisons look alike? Well, all you might be left with are the stem distinctions of what used to be the flowers, which are now seed pods. Moving on, um, I heard someone refer to the seeds as being ground pepper-like. Now these seed pods, as you see, are attached directly to the stem. And this is where this plant can be branching. However, as you see, the branches do occur near the, the top or uh, around where the flower stalk Uh, meets the stem. The stem here, as they say, terminates, stops with the seed stock or the flower stock. And additional branches may occur around this area. Now there are no edible parts to this plant. It is extremely useful with many, many, many quote unquote other uses. However, the leaves and the flowers can be steeped in hot water and a tea made of them. Now the flowers will produce more of a sweet tasting tea. To learn how to prepare these parts and all of its other uses, visit survivalplantsmemorycourse.com and again just click on Verbascum thapsis. You can now search by nickname candlestick click on uh, any one of those two links and look for methods of preparation so much more information this has been part one and in part two I'll be sharing a mnemonic or memory technique to help you commit to memory the most distinguishing characteristics of this plant for identifying purposes and thank you for watching